Soya Kiroi is an orphan boy who has no recollection of his past. But one day, after witnessing some mechas fighting against an alien invasion, he starts to find out about himself. He's from another planet that was destroyed by a dragon with the same power used by the mechas. Upon seeing this, he promises to get revenge for his people and family. One year ago, the planet of Sirius decided to launch a massive invasion on the planet of Real. But they soon had to retreat, as a massive dragon launched an attack on their own planet. As a result, the dragon destroyed everything and everyone, leaving only one survivor, Soya Kiroi. He was saved by Jinko, the only survivor from the real planet, and a huge mecha cat named Sensei. They took him to Earth where they were waiting for him to regain his memories and fight back. Kiroi acts like an ordinary high school boy, except for the fact that he seems to be plagued by dreams of a horrible event, where the world is in flames and a man is pleading for him to leave the city. The same man launches away in a beam of light, flying toward what seems to be a giant dragon. Kiroi, left standing worried and confused, is swallowed by smoke that explodes from the impact of the colliding dragon and beams of light. Waking up in a cold sweat, Kiroi rises and checks a nearby book on the meaning of dreams, which states that dreams of a dragon symbolize growth and change, while implying good luck. On school, he has lunch with Nozomi, his friendly class rep. She asks about his friends and he solemnly says that he doesn't have any, since he doesn't know what to talk with them about. Kiroi reveals his lack of memories, as well as the loss of his family, and Nozomi apologizes profusely, but he says it doesn't bother him even though not remembering is surprising. Back in class, Kiroi's mind is drifting when he feels a random urge to look towards the window. A city broadcast plays, stating that a large UFO has appeared by the coast, and ordering a city-wide evacuation. While the class empties, Sawyer runs to the window and notices the UFO, shaped like a giant floating stuffed bear with a strange design. Nozomi grabs him and they evacuate to the gym, where the broadcast shows several UFOs appearing all over the world. In an attempt to take it down, the military sends in jets to test the defense of the object, but are unsuccessful. All conventional weapons like rockets and machine guns are useless, doing no damage against the UFO. The object releases a strange attack, and in a flash of light, it seems to drag the pilots of the jets into some kind of perfect hallucination. The government is left confused as the pilots disengage, and while they're distracted, seven men and women appear on the shore. They launch into the air as beams of light and Kuroi, having seen this on the broadcast, is left shaken by the resemblance to the beams of light from his dream. The seven lights transform, blue crystals breaking away to reveal giant mechanical beasts that fly toward the UFO. As the seven giants get close, the UFO begins to shoot out tiny rocket versions of itself, which chase and hit one of the beasts, doing damage to them. As they fly around, Hideo Torai, one of the pilots of the Mechs, finds a weak spot near the back of the UFO's stuffed animal head, and is told to go inside to destroy the core. Torai flies in but instead of finding an enemy, he gets sucked into a peaceful dream that gives him all he wishes for. Eventually, he breaks free from the hallucination and slashes at his surroundings, successfully destroying the UFO which explodes with stuffing and shining light. With news helicopters incoming, the seven go their separate ways, flying off in different directions to be untraceable. While watching the battle take place on the news, Kiroi gets a strange phone call from Jinko, telling him to find her and Sensei outside. Once they meet up, Kuroi learns that he is meant to destroy the mechanical beasts and take their powers, though he doesn't understand why yet. Regardless, he listens and pursues the same pilot who destroyed the UFO earlier in the day. Hideo, upon landing far away from his comrades, finds himself facing a disguised Kuroi, who demands he give up his power. He refuses of course, so Sensei swallows Kiroi's body, forcing him to transform into a smaller yet strong cat-like mech. Feeling threatened, Hideo transforms, and Kiroi is appalled by the sheer difference in size. Hideo's mech is huge compared to the cat mech, but Jinko offers her encouragement by promising him a good meal for dinner. Yelling with excitement, Kiroi dashes towards the beast, dodging his swing and grappling the leg of the giant. He heaves and throws the mech down, then launches himself into an overhead smash. Hideo blocks him with a shield of power, but Kiroi reflexively summons a large hammer, which slams into and crushes the giant mech. It explodes with a burst of light and Hideo gets his necklace taken from him by Jinko. He weakly asks if this is Nebula's power. She throws the necklace to Kuroi and he wonders uncertainly if he is being used by them, taken in to be their personal soldier. Kuroi catches the necklace and his mind is flooded with memories of destruction, fire, and a dragon, the same as his dream. 
Their power is the same one used by the dragon that destroyed his planet. In rage, he demands Hideo to return and tell his team that he will come for them, swearing to defeat them all. Kiroi is angry and feels like he's being used, and decides not to go to school anymore, to instead focus on his revenge. He asks if Jinko and Sensei are the ones who created the UFO from the previous day, but they tell him no. Kiroi proclaims that he will stay with them, but expresses his anger at being made a soldier, and states that he hates both the power and Sensei. Kiroi realizes that another UFO, or nebula weapon, has appeared in the sky, and he makes his way home. As the six members of Grand Paladin fight over the ocean, Hideo excluded, Kiroi and his group watch from nearby. Jinko and Sensei explain the difference between themselves, the pacifist faction, and the strange weapons, the sealing faction. Their pacifist faction prefers to watch over the humans from the sidelines, while the sealing faction deploys their weapons to stop humans from evolving into a more dangerous race. Meanwhile, Mu, a pilot of one of the mechanical beasts, is successfully able to destroy the core of the nebula weapon. She lands back on the island with her best friend and fellow pilot, Harumi, where Kiroi is waiting for them. He demands that they give him their power, but the girls refuse, confident to be fighting together. All three of them transform and Mu immediately begins an attack, her mech spiraling forward rapidly to try and hit Kiroi first. While he successfully dodges to the side, Harumi's mech grabs and throws him onto the ground. Mu charges forward with her spiral attack and this time it connects, throwing Kiroi into the rocks behind them. Mu charges once again, but Kiroi summons his hammer and uppercuts the mech. The force launches them both into the air, and Mu's mech explodes. Jinko snatches the girl's stardust necklace. Harumi catches Mu in her fall but when they all land, Jinko says that Sensei wants them to retreat. Kiroi, however, is confident in his victory and wants to continue fighting. Sensei's choice is proven wise though, as the other pilots of Grand Paladin land nearby and surround Kiroi. Though Jinko and Sensei advise him to let himself be captured, Kuroi yells for the paladins to fight him each one on one. Two of the mechanical beasts charge toward him, but Kuroi dodges. A mech tries to grab him, but Kuroi uses it to jump toward Harumi's mech. While she throws a punch, Kuroi summons his hammer and destroys one arm, but Harumi grips him by the neck and smashes him into the ground. In a final attempt, Kiroi uses his hammer to destroy the arm holding him, then sprints toward Grand Paladin's chairman hoping to end the fight quickly. Surprisingly, the older man jumps backward and transforms, counter-attacking Kiroi's blow with an overwhelming laser, completely melting through the mountain behind them, destroying Kiroi's cat mech hand in the process. The chairman then throws punches that knock Kiroi back and forth across the terrain. Sensei, sensing the danger, finally summons a giant cat-shaped ship. The ship picks up Kiroi and his mech, Jinko quickly joining them, leaving the Grand Paladin members to retreat. Kiroi then wakes up in his room, where he is told he was unconscious for three days. He sees the injury to Sensei's arm, and gives a heartfelt apology to both him and Jinko for putting them in a dangerous situation. After an enjoyable day at school, Kuroi returns to his home only for the island to fall under attack once again. The Nebula Weapon, this time in the form of a group of upside-down baby figures, and the Grand Paladins launch into action. Harumi leads the charge on the Nebula Weapon and after the team locates the core, she rushes in to destroy it, hoping to avenge Mu's defeat. While she does manage to destroy the core and cause it to explode, Seigi appears falling through the air while unconscious and unarmored. Kiroi is surprised to see his new friend with the Grand Paladins, but lets it go despite looking disappointed. Meanwhile, Harumi takes her mech and flies to Sensei's giant cat ship, finding them all standing on top. She challenges Kiroi to a one-on-one -on -one battle where he accepts and transforms. The battle begins and Kiroi dashes towards the mech, sliding underneath and summoning his hammer. Harumi dodges it and circles back around with a counterattack of barrages, which Kiroi dodges. He makes a quick attack with his hammer and is able to destroy Harumi's arms. He tries to finish her quickly but Harumi, refusing to lose in front of Mew, becomes increasingly enraged. With a dark power, she regrows her arms, and she attacks with renewed vigor. Kiroi summons his hammer and once again lands a strong blow to her body, but Harumi's armor somehow reacts to her intense emotions, and she transforms into a powerful dragon. Harumi becomes unresponsive, her power is taking control, and the dragon begins attacking everything around. The Nika and Yasuk from the Grand Paladins reluctantly team up with Kiroi to pacify Harumi before she destroys anything else, but her dragon form is too powerful. Sensei decides to use its cat doping form which is far stronger, more agile, and can fly. 
Unfortunately though, it still isn't enough, as any attacks Kuroi makes seem to regenerate with no effect. Miu comes screaming her friend's name to try and bring Harumi back to normal. Jinko spots her in the chaos and decides to help, bringing Miu to Kuroi and telling him to throw them toward the dragon. Trusting Jinko, he launches the two into the mouth of the dragon, where Miu is finally able to reach Harumi, shattering the dragon form. Jinko manages to steal Harumi's power in the chaos, but Harumi and Miu are fine with the result. Throughout the school day, Kuroi seems plagued by memories of his brother. The next day, another nebula weapon attacks. Takizo and Yasuk, the only active members of Grand Paladin left, try to fight and aim for its core. Jinko tells Kuroi about the nebula weapon, and how it uses its target's dreams to sap their motivation, essentially sealing them from any greater ambition than their basic needs. Takizo and Yasuk manage to destroy the core, but a large snake emerges from the explosion as a separate entity. The snake, much faster than either of the mechs, moves rapidly toward the city. Kuroi uses cat doping to catch up to the snake and knock it back. The snake goes full circle and attacks again but Kuroi summons his blade and slices through and around the snake, making it explode with light. Takizo upon seeing Kuroi slay the snake, makes a preemptive strike by attacking first. Kuroi dodges narrowly and faces him, but Takizo finally summons the full power of his armor, charging up a bright sword attack that lights up the sky. In a split second, Kuroi charges and Takizo raises his blade, their blows hitting successfully. But only the cat mech is left flying. Takizo's mech bursts into light and Yasuke catches the old man, both retreating to a safe area near the shore. Kuroi meets the Grand Paladin members on the ground, and they willingly give up their jars of stardust. Surprised, he takes them and reveals that the dragon who destroyed his homeland is dead. But the person with the strongest aura of the dragon, the chairman, is still alive. Across the city, two giant mechanical beasts can be seen fighting the chairman Takashi and an unknown mech, who is the chairman's former secretary Shiroishi, who had been acting as a spy for the sealing faction. Kuroi, having gained the power sources of both Takizo and Yasuke, sees the fight between Shiroishi and Takashi and wants to join. However, Sensei tells him to go back to the spaceship first and then wait for them to show up. He asks Jinko to enter the cat mecha with Soya so they'll have the power of two people. Shiroishi, using the power of the sealing faction, teleports Takashi to the spaceship where Kuroi waits. Kuroi tackles him with such strong speed and intensity that creates a massive crater. Takashi, weak from his battle against Shiroishi and seeing the situation as dire, somehow transforms into a dragon and charges his strongest attack. His laser builds up into an immense ball of power. Kuroi charges in and to save the town below. He smashes his sword into the dragon's jaw, forcing it to fire the blast towards the sky. In an intense struggle to keep the dragon from pushing back, Kuroi remembers his brother and how he was the one who saved him in his dream all those nights ago. This brings him courage and, despite the pain of such an attack, Kuroi is able to hold the dragon's jaw up and keep the town below safe. Once the attack runs dry, Kuroi charges at an equally tired and bruised Takashi, cutting at him with an intense slash that cuts the dragon mech into pieces. Takashi lies on the floor defeated and for a moment, Kuroi sees his brother standing nearby, staring at the city below. Flustered, he turns around and realizes that Takashi has died, the reality of him killing someone causing tears to pour down his cheeks. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.